President Biden is ordering his campaign to get far more aggressive when it comes to his likely opponent. This brand new reporting from CNN's MJ Lee is that Biden personally instructed his top campaign aides recently to spend even more time painting Trump as unhinged and calling out his inflammatory rhetoric. Two sources tell MJ that the thrust of Biden's instruction was to significantly ramp up the campaign's efforts to highlight the crazy S <laughs> that, that Trump says in public. CNN's MJ Lee is at the White House. I guess I can say the S word, but maybe too early on the West Coast, at least. <laughs> MJ? Yeah, Dana, you know, I think this reporting gives us some interesting insight into how the president himself uh, personally views his campaign strategy. What I was told by sources is, as you said, uh, President Biden instructing personally some of his top campaign aides to essentially be even more aggressive in highlighting uh, some of Trump's most inflammatory and wild comments. You know, it's not a secret at all, obviously, that the Biden campaign believes it is critical uh, to draw these black and white contrasts between between Biden and Trump as they see it uh, when it comes to even their temperament, their worldviews, uh, their policies. Uh, but as the Biden campaign uh, makes this full pivot to the general election, it's clear that Biden himself believes that it is critical to paint uh, the former president as being unhinged and simply unfit uh, for office. And I think we've seen the Biden campaign and the president himself uh, take those opportunities more aggressively in recent weeks uh, when it comes to, uh, for example, going after the former former president's comments about NATO or going after his uh, mocking of Nikki Haley's husband, who is currently serving abroad. And when I reached out to the campaign for comment for this story, this is a part of what the campaign's uh, rapid response director said in a statement to us. Uh, he said Donald Trump is the polar opposite of everything President Biden stands for and has accomplished since he took office. And the campaign's top priority over the next nine months will be laying out that stark choice for voters. Uh, one bit of context, Anna, that I do think is important is that Biden campaign advisors uh, have been concerned that so many voters seem to have sort of forgotten about some of the moments from the Trump presidency that they see as sort of outrageous and unacceptable. Uh, this is sort of the rose-colored glasses effect that they are concerned about, and they are determined to try to fix that uh, heading into November by highlighting all of these examples. Forgotten or maybe um, become numb to. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you so much, MJ. Great reporting. Appreciate it. My panel is back here. And let's just use one example of the execution, it looks like, of uh, what the president told his team to do. Just yesterday, <clears throat> the Biden campaign Twitter account said, after days of silence, Trump finally responds to Alexei Navalny's death by comparing Navalny himself in deranged, to himself in a deranged social media post. Yeah, every chance that they have, they are going to try to show that contrast. And they have, you know, this is something that they did during his run in 2020. I mean, he launched his campaign about Trump's comments and response to the neo-Nazi march in Charlottesville. So it was about striking that contrast repeatedly about the direction of the country. And the President Biden has more material to work with now because President Trump, along with allies, have been laying out a blueprint, Project 2025, for what they would necessarily uh, try to walk in doing on day one. I mean, the f former President Trump has said he would be a dictator just on day one. He has uh, floated the idea of using the Insurrection Act to use military in uh, U.S. cities mm -hmm. to cr uh, crack down on protests, to also round up undocumented migrants. So there's a lot of material for former President Biden to work with that, that his campaign thinks a lot of voters aren't really aware of just yet. And, and let's listen to another example. This is Mitch Landrieu, who worked in the Biden administration and now is the Biden campaign co-chair. I understand that the, the, the concern about the polls, you see this actually for both candidates, but essentially as this campaign heats up, you're going to have to make a choice between two very, very different people. Donald Trump wakes up every day thinking about himself. He thinks about oppression. He thinks about revenge. He thinks about how to hurt other people. He thinks about how to get back at them. He thinks about how to do things that helps himself. Joe Biden wakes up every day thinking about how to fight for the American people. You know, the thing about this cam uh, this campaign and what will likely be the, the matchup between Biden and Trump is that they are both deeply unpopular. Like, voters do not like either of them <laughs> a lot. And so, for Biden, if he can make the focus on Trump and make it a referendum on Trump, 
that is much better on him because the voters really aren't liking Biden all that much. So if he can make it about all the things that Trump says, all the wild things that he says, and try to remind people of, of that chaos that Nikki Haley is often talking about, he thinks that will work in his favor. Yeah, I mean, and, and the, the unsaid uh, part of this strategy to keep pushing out the bad things uh, or the controversial things that Donald Trump says is even if you don't love Joe Biden, yeah. if you are worried about Donald Trump, not unlike 2020, right. yeah. vote, in, vote to protest Donald Trump, meaning vote for Joe Biden. And you know what? Biden and his campaign, they've got a lot of money. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of questions about whether or not they would do okay on the fundraising front. And the answer is they have. They have uh, $42 million that was raised just in January, $130 million uh, cash on hand. That's, I believe, the combined uh, for the campaign and the party. Yeah, and these are a lot of small dollar donors, right? I mean, it gives a different uh, image of this campaign because people like to say, oh, well, people aren't really engaged or energized around this campaign. Well, you know, to the tune of 42 million, there are obviously some people who want to give to this campaign. I think this message around Donald Trump and sort of highlighting the crazy part of Donald Trump, it really works with those Trump to Biden voters, right? They are very much invested in the idea that they have turned away from Donald Trump. They almost see it as part of their identity. And so highlighting the crazy things about Donald Trump really, I think, reinforces uh, the stickiness factor that Biden has with some of those crucial voters. You know, you mentioned the Trump to Biden voters. Those are really critical voters. We, of course, are talking about people who voted for Trump in 2016, voted for Donald for Joe Biden in 2020 because they were disappointed with Donald Trump. Uh, Richard Tao, who is uh, somebody who we use all the time mm -hmm. to show the focus groups that he does in swing states, uh, he went to Michigan and talked to those exact voters, Trump to Biden voters. And one of the things that he found uh, was that some of these voters were... When, when they heard clips from the president, from President Biden, full clips, uh, they were surprised at how cogent mm -hmm. and coherent he sounded. Mm -hmm. Listen to one example. He doesn't necessarily seem like he's like not mentally there. So yeah, I'm kind of conflicted. Meaning what, you expect him to be in worse condition? Yeah, as far as the amount just thinking of all them reporters and everybody around him, I would think at that point with them hammering him with that many questions, you'd think he would like kind of like mentally break, even with if it was like that advanced of like dementia or anything of that nature. So again, this was a reaction to uh, the uh, press, a press conference that was yeah. played for these voters. Um, I don't know, maybe the bar isn't that high for, for Biden. And I don't know if this is uh something that the Biden campaign could take to heart, like just get Biden him out there and have him yeah. talk. Yeah, I mean, Biden is a smart guy. I mean, yeah. even in this press conference where he was seeming to confuse the presidents of Mexico and Egypt, he gave very detailed, nuanced answers on any number of topics, particularly in the Israel-Gaza conflict. So listen, they hope the State of the Union will go a long yeah. way uh, in addressing yeah. some of these that's, issues. That's key. Yeah. Every yeah. Democratic strategist I talk to says he just needs to be out there more. Yeah. Yeah. He needs to be yeah. flooding the zone on all fronts. I mean, tiny clips go viral. I was talking to a Gen Z voter who said that they saw the clips where Biden mixed up foreign leaders. And I asked if they had seen the clips where former President Donald Trump had mixed up foreign leaders. And they said, no, they didn't know he had done that. So mm -hmm. that's a, another part of it, which is whether striking the contrast. It, the, it's yeah. really interesting because it seems like for Biden, it's the idea is like, get him out there more. Whereas the more that people hear from Trump, you often see the opposite, <laughs> where they get right. turned off and they say, look, you know, oh, I didn't know he was saying all that. So it, it's interesting that they both seem to have like the opposite problem.